Hello and welcome to Cosmeteer. Cosmeteer is an early access Starship building game available on Steam. Check it out. Uh, we're going to jump right into it. In this series, I'm making a set of ships that are uh, themed around the beehive or a bee colony. Uh, I've already done a starter ship, a corvette ship, a mining ship, like a worker bee kind of thing. And today I want to start a pretty important ship, and that's the hive, right? Um, this game does not currently support, like carrier type ships really you can kind of do some stuff with explosive charges but it's uh it's a little troublesome in any case i want to make a processing ship so the bees are bringing back the the, the pollen right and we're, we're gonna make some honey uh and in this game honey is money so here we go i'm gonna make a new ship sure and um basically we want to have a very low crew requirement on this ship so i'm gonna keep it to just six um, don't let that fool you though. This is going to be a fairly large ship. Um, I'll turn into blueprint, blueprint mode and pause it so that we don't have to deal with uh, some of the realities of the ship floating around while we wait. Um, basically, there are factories that exist in this game, uh, and the factories turn raw materials into more valuable materials. They're more valuable both in the sense that you can sell them to the station for more credits, and they're more valuable in the sense that you can actually use them to build your ship, to power your ship uh, as ammunition, right? Uh, and each one of these things will have different requirements on what we need to put into it. Um, to, that, to that point, we need a lot of storage space and a lot of factory space. Now, factories have the additional uh, property that if you place multiple of them adjacent to each other, they gain production speed. Um, for the type of ship that we're making here, I don't think that's going to be very important because the idea for a hive here in our in our career playthrough is going to be that uh, the hive sits next to a station, relies on the defenses of the station, and slowly processes whatever materials the miners bring back in order to sell for more money or to use as building materials. So here we go. I'm going to rough in a shape of a hive. Um, you know, I, I kind of think this cartoony hive is going to be fun, so let's let's start with that. I'm going to start with maybe like a curved shape, um, and then another curved shape coming out from that. You know, the same kind of hive that uh, uh, Bugs Bunny might drop on somebody, right? Coming down like this. Okay, great. Yeah, that looks all right. Okay. Um, <laughs> of course, there's no fill, fill tool. Fail. There's no fail tool. And we're going to be working in uh, filling in all this uh, corridor here. Or, you know, as we go, we could actually just fill it in. Uh, I think, yeah, let's, let's start with that. So let's have some general storage and some airlocks that are right next to these starting compartments. Um, so we can have maybe just a few general storage. Uh, I'll put in the airlocks um, here. Hmm. You know, because this ship is more vertical than, than horizontal, I think what I'll do is I'll put in moving walkways on one side and we'll kind of concentrate, no, moving walkways on both sides. And we'll concentrate on um, organizing our factory units from top to bottom. So here we go. There's very little power requirement on a ship like this. One small reactor should be able to power every factory. Um, put in some doors. Oh, that's right. <clears throat> and we'll have some moving walkways going the opposite direction as well. And then, you know, uh, the ship is pretty straightforward, really. Aside from the styling on it, all we're going to do is put in a big storage, a factory of some kind. Um, let's start with steel. Steel is going to be one of the first factories that you can put in. And I'm just going to do one at a time, so I don't need to mirror this. And then we're going to have an output storage area for that same factory. So. Uh, input is iron ore, and then the iron ore gets smelted into steel, and then we'll have a stack of steel plates sitting here at the top. Easy peasy. 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do Tri Steel. Tri Steel is something you get fairly early. Should turn that. And a storage on top of that. Great. Uh, diamonds are very valuable, but not exactly an early game resource. Um, Hypercoils are fairly oil. Coils, that's a very early resource. That's made from copper. So let's go down the other way. Couple storage. Um, some copper. Cool. And uh, another storage on the bottom. Okay, what other factories do I need here? So I've got steel, coils, tri-steel. Let's do hypercoils. Hypercoils are again going to be a more late game resource, but uh, why not? In fact, we might as well just do every resource while we're at it. <clears throat> um, enriched uranium and processors are used to build reactors and cockpits and control structures. Um, processors are also used in some other advanced components. Um, it's looking like you know our verticality here is used up. Uh, and we don't really have to have this general storage here, so I think now I'm going to work uh, left to right and try to put in some factories. So let's actually um, let's redo this. Uh, we can turn back on mirror mode, put in storage. These can be moving walkways in these two spots here, but we'll have some going away from the crew quarters and back towards the crew quarters. Uh, for this storage, it's um, it can be our processor, sure. Oh, mirror mode, I don't need you. Processor creation, enriched uranium creation over there, and we need a couple more storages. Okay. Uh, on the bottom part here, uh, well, we already got our, nope, that's for the uh, coils and the other here, so we need a new storage. Um, we could do diamonds, uh, mines, nukes, EMPs, HEs, all this ammo kind of stuff. Um, it's kind of nice to have the ship itself build those things. Although in, in a beehive, it makes sense that, you know, little bees aren't going to be carrying that around. Hmm. I happen to know that diamonds are very compact. So let's, let's try with these others first. Uh, we'll come to diamonds near last. Let's try nukes. Okay, uh, actually nukes can be over here by enriched uranium. Maybe they use that. EMP missiles, cool, and some storages. All right, and looks like we've got to turn again if we want another factory to go in here. Uh, or we could cap off with a factory up here. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Um, we have EMP missiles, so we're into HE missiles and ammo. All right. Um, not too symmetrical, but that's okay. From the outside, it's just going to be um, painted over. There we go. All right, that'll be for our HE missiles. And down here at the bottom, we can have an ammo. Ammo factories are very compact. They're generally included in ships, but... Let's have one over here. Uh, and for this storage, because we're running out of stay space and also because ammo is uh, one of the cheaper resources, let's uh, let's go ahead and put a small one in here. Okay. Um, that leaves mines. Uh, We could put a cap here at the bottom for mines. We're going to have um, two storages. Looking OK. Um, any mining left? We did not do diamonds yet. Yeah, so diamonds can go over here. And, you know, diamonds are uh, expensive, rare, and, you know, hard to find the materials to make them carbon, 
until later on. So we can just go with some small storages for diamonds for now. Uh, they also are used for <laughs> ionic lasers, which I tend to be a fan of, so I usually use them up as soon as I get them. They're also used for large shields and some other things. Okay. Mm Moving walkway. Turn back on mirror mode. Get walkways out to the end of all of these uh, sections. Okay. All right, and doors. Everything needs doors. Unfortunately, because it's not exactly mirrored, um, we may not be able to, to see where all these doors are going. We might have some random ones, but honestly, this ship is not about efficiency. This is basically just about bulk storage and, um, you know, if it works at all, if the people can get where they're going, then they're going to be able to do their jobs before you get back to it. Oh, I overrode one of my factories here. What was that? Let's undo. So if you press Control Z, you can undo oh, my nuclear missile factory. All right, so I need to undo mirror mode, flip this around, go back on mirror mode, keep building doors. OK. Good enough. So yeah, like I said, they're going to be processing this stuff. They're going to be um, working on it while my mining ship or my bounty ships are out working. So really, they have all the time in the world. Six crew, even if they work at a snail's pace, that, that's enough to take care of you know the minor um, operations of the ship. Also, we'll put in some thrusters. Um, again, they don't have to be much, and they don't have to be efficient because they are really just too putt-putt around the starship, uh, the station that is protecting them. Um, let's see. Something like that. A little sideways thrust. Cool. Um, I want to put some... Something like that. Looks good. And I'll clear out a corridor there. We'll put some down here. Looks good. And looks good, of course, is, uh, <laughs> uh, I'll say it looks functional. Yeah, this is not a very good ship or ship design. And you could, of course, make this more efficient. But I just think the efficiency is unnecessary in this case. You know, so there we go. Um, also, making all this out of corridor, you know, is, um, is weak. So what we can do... Um, We could fill it in with structure. Structure looks a little funny from the outside and you can't paint it. Uh, corridor is cheap. Um, we'll put some armor on the outside of it uh, to really style it up. But let's go ahead and fill in this empty space with some corridor. Now, from what I've seen in the campaign, you know, oh, I do. You know what, did I delete something when I put this here? Looks like I did when I added this um, thruster. There must have been some factory here. Do I do? Yeah, my nuclear factory here. Okay, so I can't mirror. Turn back on mirror. Hopefully I'll try to catch it if it makes any more problems. Yeah, see that would delete a storage, so I can't do it there. I would delete a storage, so I can't do it there. Looks like here. And those would delete storage. Down here, we should be pretty wide open. We didn't end up using these bottom quadrants. Okay. Let's put in some doors. 
Okay, and turn off mirror mode and fill in the other little odd quarters here. Okay. All right, some other things we need uh, are airlocks. Airlocks are not, you really still only need one. Um, even, <laughs> actually, let's put it up here near the crew quarters. Even whenever you are solely <laughs> moving freight around, really you only need one airlock. I don't know any reason why you would ever get more than one. Um, let's put in some armor. And the cool thing about armor is it's gonna let us stylize this a little bit more as curves. Uh, and because it's on the outside of the ship, we shouldn't have to worry about mirror mode anymore, taking out any components that we've put on the inside of the ship. Okay. Uh, here we go with our armor. Not the kind of wedge that I wanted. What am I doing? Mirror. Mirror all of this. Jeez. Give me that. They have a great deal of tools, but you know, if you're not using them, they're not doing you any good. Now you might say, you know, why is this armor necessary at all? Uh, it's not strictly necessary. Um, occasionally when you're parked around a um, space station, though, you do get some shots. If you pick a fight with a faction that is like uh, one of the main factions of the story, they will have transports and other types of ships coming to the stations to do trade. And um, although the space station will defend you uh, if you're attacked while in port, um, it can't always defend you of everything. <laughs> a couple missiles, a couple shots may get through before the station turns its guns on the enemy. Um, so we do need a little bit of armor. Also for our specific case here, it allows us to add some curvature with these uh, curved pieces here. Or uh, angular pieces. Actually, can we do some super sneaky? That looks okay. Hmm. And bend that down. Pretty sharply, so that we can make a, another. Little area here. Looking all right. Now this, unfortunately, this is going to be one of those things where uh, if you're doing the, the story mode, you know, uh, this is putting all this armor and effort into creating something that looks like a beehive is not going to be the most efficient way to play the game, obviously. This is for styling on them, guys. Uh, weird flex, but whatever. Let's just continue the curve here. Actually, no, I want it to be a little sharper, and then let's have a, a curve that we didn't plan for earlier. Okay. 
And uh, that can actually be our bottom. That seems fine. So we'll get rid of this. Uh, we'll put some triangles to cap it off. And a couple armor pieces. Fill in the rest of every corridor. Okay, there we have it. This is a $770,000 space station that's going to do every amount of processing in the game. So, you know, uh, let us make it so, make sure that these guys can get around to all their jobs. Okay, pilots accounted for. And while it's doing that, I'll do the, the saving. So we'll save the ship. Oh! Actually, I need to paint it. I'm going to have it in our base black with yellow. Um, for the beehive, I guess it's a little different. It's, it's more kind of an orange waxy color. Um, and I want to accent the, the difference in, in the sections here. So if I could find one that fades to the bottom, let's see what the fades look like, like this guy here. No, that's that's pretty good. So something like this, and then here I'll flip it around. So you get that really nice like uh, delineation, right? And this is one section, that's another section. And I'll put. Whoop, whoop. Put another one at the top, and let's go ahead and make that for all of the uh, joining sections. Looks like maybe here is one. And here is one. Oop. Missed some little section there. Uh, we have one here. Oop, that is not right. And one here. And then the bottom of the ship. And this conjoining section. And here. Alright, now all the rest of this space we just want to be yellow. So we'll just fill it in with our yellow orange color here. I do like seeing the uh, a little too much on there. I do like seeing the engines pop online as we're uh, painting here. Our crew are slowly getting their uh, energy in place. Now, some people in the career mode, actually, the most popular strategy that I see is to have a, a ship that's not exactly your fighter ship, not the one doing the the bounties. Uh, but kind of a multi-purpose ship that is okay in a fight. It can survive long enough for your fighter ship to get there. And it basically takes on all of the roles of mining, factory production, uh, long-range transport cargo kind of stuff. I don't really like playing that way. I think it's nice to have a ship parked right next to the station that you're doing the most business with. Uh, and its entire job is just to sit there and produce materials. Um, to that end, you eventually want to add a hyperdrive to a ship like this. It's not exactly an immediate priority, but it is nice to have. Because then you can um, jump the entire ship from uh, location to location, from base to base directly, instead of having to watch it limp across space or have to escort it even worse in hostile space. So that's looking okay. Um, Hive doesn't have any eyes, and, and it's pretty, you know, it looks boring, but I think uh, that's about as close to a actual beehive as we could look in this game. <laughs> Alright, um, so we'll save that. Factory. No, beehive factory. Okay. 
Um, yeah, it looks like we don't have any cargo in these. Um, I guess I can go ahead and show how you might set up something like this in the game. Uh, whenever you have resources and you want specific resources to be gathered in specific places, you can actually hit this uh, cube button, manage resources, and you can tell it where you want your crew to place things. So, oh, turn off mirror mode. So next to the enriched uranium factory, I want uranium, right? And on the other side, I would want the enriched uranium. So this gives a natural workflow where the crew members are going to take the uranium, process it, and then put it out here. So you don't have them like wandering all over the station trying to take it to general storage. Uh, and same over here, it looks like we need uh, gold and copper wire to make processors. So let's go about half of this with gold and half of it with coils. And there you have it, we'll make some processors. Um, on the output here is our processors. Uh, for the diamonds, it's carbon in. I guess it shows you here, carbon in, uh, and then diamond out. For, uh, we need copper and iron for EMP missiles. So that's going to be copper and iron. And then on this side is going to be these EMP missile parts. All right here we need copper and coils to make hyper coils. Here we need iron and um, ammo to make mines. Here we need copper to make coils. Here we need uranium and iron. Um, and this uranium is actually the unenriched uranium. And we're gonna be making nuclear missile parts there. Here we need sulfur. Uh, and we're gonna be creating ammo. Uh, here we need iron and we're making steel. Here we need tritanium and we are making tri-steel plates. <laughs> okay, and here we have iron and sulfur. You know, we are making high explosive missiles. And there you have it. So now we've set up um, some basic kind of uh, you know inventory system so that your stuff can just get on here and get off pretty easily. Uh, you know, uh, improvements for this ship are, are many. Feel free to make it your own. That's what this game's all about. I mean, just for starters, I would be putting a hyperdrive um, right in the center here, uh, just so this thing can move around. And yeah, it's not going to be very efficient. It's going to take a lot of um, hy hyperdrive uh, hyponium or whatever it's called to be able to get out of here. See, its efficiency is only 27%. So if we put multiple hyperdrives, it would take actually less of the hyponium or whatever. Maybe we could put three. There we go. Um, and then I might put some extra storage, just general storage, so that uh, we could store things like that hyperdrive fuel. Um, and because we have all this corridor already set up open for us, I mean, it's really just anywhere it fits, right? And then you just don't put an assignment on it, and it'll store whatever else exists. Uh, so I think the only thing we didn't really put storage place for was the hyper fuel. But, eh, I don't know.
maybe there are some surprises that I'm not aware of yet. Uh, and then um, you could put storage all up and down the center here. You could add more crew. Uh, I like to keep the crew here small because when you're doing an unloading or loading mission, uh, especially at a station, both crews from both ships are going to help out. So if your mining ship has 12 crew and this has six, you've got 18 people working on moving the materials back and forth. That's usually enough. You know, you're good. Um, I do like the armor on the outside. I wouldn't skimp on that. You know, you are going to take shots in this. Like I said, when a faction gets a little upset with you, uh, <laughs> as they tend to do, um, let's save it and update it. Um, so, I mean, unfortunately, you're looking at like a million dollar ship here and very close. Um, it's not the most efficient design, but, you know, th this is something that you build up to in the campaign. You're not going to need to start out by building nuclear missiles, right? You might only start out with a single section in the center that processes iron into steel. Um, and this is just kind of a, a fun little right nod to the beans. It can move, you know, I mean, it's not completely dead in space. It can limp around if you need it to. It can hyperdrive if you need it to. Uh, we would need, let's see, actually, how zoomed out can we get? Uh, we don't have really any landmarks, any suns or anything. But you can see how much uh, hyperdrive fuel it would cost. This is actually pretty far. This would be like almost across the entire solar system. You're looking at like 110 fuel, which is not undoable. Um, also, if you didn't know, cargo is completely free. Uh, it doesn't actually count for, sorry, what I mean to say is cargo bays have a mass associated with them. So this one has 16 tons. But if I were to fill it with iron, even though iron obviously has mass, uh, the weight stays at 16 tons. So the things you're carrying don't increase that, don't increase the hyperdrive cost or anything like that. Uh, and that's it for today, guys. So thank you for tuning in. I hope you liked my uh, beehive creation here, and I'll see you next time with more bee-themed Cosmeteer. Thank you. Bye.